the PRP stands for platelet-rich plasma. Uh, it's plasma, which is the liquid part of the blood that is rich in a particular cell called platelets. And in hair restoration, we use it uh, in two different ways. You could use it as a, a hair maintenance uh, procedure to rejuvenate and boost existing hair that is, that is on its way out. Alternatively, we could use it as part of the hair transplant procedure to boost or uh, the recipient uh, area where the grafts are going in, if you like, uh, akin to fertilizing uh, the soil. So in this instance, we would take the blood, prepare it and inject it into the area where the hair is going before we implant them. Uh, whereas if we're restoring hair, then it's done not necessarily part of a surgical procedure. Somebody comes in, we take the blood and we inject the thinning uh, parts of the hair that need uh, strengthening or rejuvenating. When we are doing PRP, patient comes in, we take blood from their arm in a test tube, just like when you donate blood. And when we have the right amount, we process that blood in a centrifuge that spins uh, the blood. And that spinning process um, gives us a concentrated amount or a higher amount of these platelets. Because inside those platelets, there are proteins called growth factors that play a variety of roles in the body, including stimulating hair growth. Once we have that concentrated amount of those platelets in, in solution, in, in plasma, we then um, inject it with very small needles into the recipient area, a very small amount, 0.1 of a mil per square uh, centimeter. And this could be done under local anesthetic or without, depending on the patient's sensitivity or the patient's requirements. When we are um, withdrawing the blood, that is a minor uh, needle prick, so that's not a big deal. But then we may have to inject uh, something like between 60 and 80 tiny injections into the scalp. So it feels like a, a mild tattoo, if, if you like, and a lot of most people are quite tolerant of it um, to have that done. But for sensitive people, we could inject local anesthetic around the area to make the scalp go numb. And it, when we do that, then the scalp goes numb and you can't feel anything. Of course, if we are doing this PRP as part of a hair transplant procedure, then we're doing local anesthetic anyway, so the patient doesn't feel it. When we are uh, advising or performing PRP, it's very important to select the right patient. So um, if the patient um, has hardly lost any hair, then clearly the benefit's gonna be minimal. And at the opposite end, if the patient has lost too much hair, then you've left too much to do for the PRP and it's unlikely to be of help there. So there's a middle of the way, um, recognize thinning, but not too much thinning, that is likely to work, uh, respond best. And the those are the kind of patients that will see the most benefit in terms of volume of hair. When they put their hands through their hair, they feel more in their hands. Um, the potential benefit from a PRP treatment could last anywhere between three to 12 months. So normally if somebody's coming in for rejuvenating their, their scalp, I say you need somewhere like two or three injections over two or three months to set it up. And then after that, you may need uh, an injection usually once every six months or once every 12 months. But the key is we assess each patient independently and uh, we come up with a regime uh, regarding the frequency of these injections. If we're performing PRP as part of the rejuvenation process, people usually come into the clinic and they spend less than an hour um, having uh, the uh, process done. And there isn't really anything preparatory they need to do beforehand. And afterwards, the scalp may, um, may be a little bit pink, um, but really there's hardly any uh, visible effect um, and hardly any pain afterwards. And they can usually get back to doing their normal activities um, immediately after the procedure. 